Excited because a great friend of ours is going to stop by the show once again. He's coming to town about one hour from where we broadcast here. In the state's capital, Hartford, Connecticut, he'll be performing with his band, The Purple Experience, on Saturday night at Infinity Hall, a great venue. And uh, he's going to be bringing all that Minneapolis funk and roll to town. Keyboardist and producer extraordinaire toured around the world, all around the world, with his buddy Prince and everybody in the revolution. And we welcome to the Upper Room in WVOF once again, Mr. Matt, Dr. Fink. How you doing, Doc? I'm really good, thanks. How are you guys? Yeah, we're, we're doing good, and, you know, we, we get starved, you know. We, we love the Minneapolis Twin City sound, and, uh, you know, whenever you guys are able to come to New York, New Jersey, or Massachusetts, Connecticut, we're, we're happy. So uh, when was the last time you've been to Connecticut? Do you remember? Yeah, I think I remember, but it, boy, it's a long, it's a really long time. Right. I mean, I've been to New York quite a bit over the last uh, couple of decades, but I don't get up uh, your way very often. So I think it, it may have been on tour with Prince, even like maybe, uh, maybe Love Sexy period. Right. Uh, I think, you know, right in there. Uh, and, um, of course, I think I've been to Boston since then, but, uh, yeah, I really like Hartford. I have a few friends there too, and uh, you know, I we really appreciate all the support you've given the uh, Minneapolis musicians and all the help and promotion you've given everybody whenever they come to town. Yeah, no, no so, doubt. And I'll tell you, yeah. the, fir- the first time I ever uh, saw you and Prince and and uh, uh, the band. First ever Prince concert was the 1999 tour at the Hartford Civic Center. You guys came in in a huge snowstorm. I don't, I don't know if you remember that on the 1999 I remember tour. it like it was yesterday. Yeah, wow. I remember it like it was yesterday, and we were stranded there. Uh huh. We couldn't we couldn't fly out. We were supposed to try to fly out, you know, after the show or get a, or take the bus or whatever we were doing, and we right. couldn't go. So I yeah. remember it. Oh yes. yeah, I, I practically kidnapped my girlfriend at the time determined to go to the show which didn't sit well with her parents when uh we came back that night so or the next night <laughs> so, oh yeah oh yeah i remember yeah. that tour. i was amazed that the show actually went off but you know you guys had a great show as always yeah that was yeah. a those were the fun days definitely fun times so so the band the purple experience led by dr fink matt fink with us right now and uh what was um y- your thoughts in in getting back into the 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 music which you were so involved with and and putting uh going out on the road with this band well back in uh spring of 2010 i was doing a special event for the rock and roll hall of fame in raleigh north carolina and i was working with peppy willie who was one of prince's mentors in the early days and he had his group 94 east performing and he invited me to uh, to uh do the show with him along with some other uh Minneapolis musicians, and uh, after we did the event, a couple of those guys who I've known for a while approached me with their idea to do a Prince tribute-style show, and uh, at first, you know, I wasn't sure I wanted to do that, Mm -hmm. but as I thought about it more, uh, I just thought it might be a good way to get out and play again and also bring the Minneapolis sound to a wider audience that Prince can't always get to. And the, and I was right, the fans have been very appreciative, and I, I get a lot of people coming up after shows saying that uh, they never got to see Prince, they haven't had a chance to see him yet, or Prince never came to their town because they lived in a smaller community and they couldn't get away. So there's a lot of fans out there that that have never seen him live, and then we we give him a great dose of uh, all the uh, '80s era music that I used to do with him. Mm-hmm. So uh, the gentlemen that I'm working with do an excellent job at uh, recreating the music from that era. Now, tell us. I, I I noticed from at one point you had Vandell playing drums with you, but who's in the current band? Uh, yes, I've got. Um, Ron Karen on drums now. Okay. Uh, and uh, 
he's uh, he's worked with the Rembrandts here from Minneapolis as well as I, I've also worked a little bit with the Rembrandts in the last few years. But uh, in fact, that's how I met Ron was uh, working with uh, Phil Solom from the Rembrandts, who does some solo shows around the Twin Cities here. And whenever Phil works, uh, I do keyboards for him. So Ron was involved with some of those uh, shows, and then I I really enjoyed working with Ron and decided to bring him on board because, uh, you know, Bobby Vandell isn't always available. Mm-hmm. He's, he works with us, several other groups. So then uh, we we um, have this gentleman by the name of Ace Mack on bass. Okay. And Tracy Blake on guitar and Marshall Charloff, who is our Prince doppelganger. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, and he does a... He does an excellent job being Prince. So, right. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it is a tribute act in the true sense of the word. So, uh, you know, he dresses like Prince and does the whole thing. So it's a lot of fun. Now, now choosing the set list, I mean, you you were involved with, from, from the get-go in Prince's early releases and tours till you know, around the uh, Graffiti Bridge era. What was it like? You know, chopping a set list down with all, so many great songs through uh, throughout those years. Uh, yeah, it's not easy. Uh, but we, we, what we do is we we try to bring out the greatest hits, and of course we we do uh, some of the deep cuts. You know, some of the album cuts mm-hmm. to, to vary it up a bit, and we have a pretty good repertoire now to choose from. So the set list do change from city to city and what type of venue we're playing at. And, you know, we do a lot of corporate events. We do casinos. Uh, of course, now we're, we're starting to get into theaters. Okay, yeah. Around the country. And we'll be playing at the Holland Theater in Ohio coming up. Um, What's the date on that? All... Do you remember? Yes, that is October, I believe it's October 9th. Okay. And that's a Friday. And then we're also going to be at what's called the uh, Wolf's Den at the Mohegan Sun Casino, also in Connecticut there. Yeah, that's a, like an and hour and a half away. Yeah, yeah, that's January 29th, uh, 2016. Yeah, you, you, you'll love that place. We, we enjoy there, the Wolf Den. and uh, so, so you'll be busy. What, what's the best place people can uh, get the Purple Experience with Matt? Matt Fink, all the information. Oh, uh, before I uh, go there, okay. Um, the, the something just uh, was booked the other day at BB King's, also in Manhattan. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Uh, so we're going to be we'll be there. I, I forgot the date though, but it will it will be on the uh, Facebook page. Okay. The Purple Experience Facebook page. All of our dates are posted there, and. Uh, That'll be posted soon. That just came in last week, so um, just waiting for the, the final confirmation. I'm trying to think what's, what's going on. I'd have to open up the calendar, but I can't at the moment. At the yeah, moment, so. yeah we'll, we'll give you some time, and we're going to get into some of your own solo solo work from Ultrasound, which is, you know, it's still a great record. And I, you know, I'm, I'm listening to some of Prince's current output, and he, he, he may have had, had his ear to start mm-hmm. view recordings for a for a sound or two on, on some of his new stuff. Uh, yes, his new album is definitely influenced by the electronica sound. Right, time right. around. Yeah. And I think that's really due to uh, Josh Welton, the right. gentleman that's working on production for him at the moment. So I find it very interesting that Prince did that, that he t- turned to an outside producer, really, for the first time in his career. Yeah, right. But yeah. Uh, very... It, Dr. Fink, Matt Fink who's uh, right now up in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and he's on the line with us getting ready. We were talking uh, off-air about all these upcoming gigs, and uh, most importantly, this Saturday night in Hartford, Connecticut, at Infinity Hall, the Purple Experience, all the great music from Prince's immense catalog. And uh, i got to ask you, um, you know, you you did so many tours with Prince. I mean, you were in his original band, and... um, what was the most challenging tour for you to to prepare with Prince? I, I know you guys rehearsed like crazy, great professionals, but what was the most challenging in advance of hitting the stage? 
That's an interesting question because the reality is every tour was as complex as the next as far as his work ethic okay. and the amount that he would he would work with the group to get ready for it. I mean, uh, we would really rehearse for anywhere from two to three months and then there was there would be easily uh, two to three weeks of technical dress rehearsals, and um, and then um, the uh, the tours themselves. You know, he he would tend to do fairly long sound checks. You know, anywhere from two to two and a half hours before a show, and there would be changes made to shows along the way on tour. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we would be, you know, required to remember those changes right before the show. Wow. So, yeah, it was, it was really a, that in itself could be a challenge. So the best way for me to handle that would be to write it down and have a little cheat kind of chart or notes on stage taped to a keyboard <laughs> so I could remember <laughs> what was going on. Or I would record, I always recorded those sound checks whenever changes were being made okay, so I could right. go in the dressing room and review before the show and other band members could listen because a lot of times the other band members thought they could remember and they realized they, uh, they couldn't always mm-hmm. uh, remember what was happening and they'd say, hey, did you record that by any chance? Right. <laughs> so right. we could hear it again, <laughs> you know. Right. So, yeah. So that that's how he operated, yeah. It was, uh, he was... Um, I, I got to tell you, one of the most dedicated, hardest working, I think, out of anybody I know in the industry. Right. Just right. about, just about, I mean, except for maybe James Brown, and I think he he knew about James Brown's reputation and really modeled his own work ethic after James, I think, in a lot of ways. Do you think after all these years that, I mean, I guess Prince would be the one to answer, but, you know, he doesn't tour as like those long tours, the flights and city to city, you know, it's kind of like a small weekend hit three, four shows. Um, do you know any reason why what we suspect that's how he tours? I notice a lot of musicians do it like that. Now you think it's just age or I'm sorry, say that again. Do you think it's just age? You know, there, there's the so-called hit and run dates, three, four shows, uh, and then a break in between. You know, is there a reason why Prince and other musicians are kind of going that route? It could be just uh, easier on the bones, as they say. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it could be. Could be like it's get, you know getting older, and um, he probably doesn't want to be sitting on a bus or traveling every other day or doing all that. I can sympathize with that. Right, you know. Yeah. So. Um, although, you know, I, I see Paul McCartney and the Rolling Stones and Bruce Springsteen, who's uh, a little bit older than us, and uh, all those guys who are way older than us. Right. Guys that are in there early. Like Paul McCartney, I saw him a year ago in Minneapolis at the, uh-huh. our our baseball stadium, and he's about 72. He did three hours on stage. Wow. Nonstop. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing, and I, and I barely saw him take a drink. Wow. On the state, I mean, I, I just, it, it was amazing, amazing energy coming from that guy at that age. So I only hope I'll be able to be doing that at that age. I, I want to be, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You, yeah. You still so, got, you got the passion and yeah, you have, you have, uh, and you've had for quite a while your own studios, Starview Studios. What, what's uh, going on cooking uh, the last couple of years that we haven't talked? Well, there, you know, there's always something coming and going in here. Uh, I work with a lot of local artists, but I do get session work from around the planet, and uh, so I'm playing on different things. And uh, one of the most interesting projects that I've been dealing with is a new company called Future Youth Records, which is a nonprofit organization based in San Francisco, and uh, it works with kids, teenagers, and inner city kids and they're you know we're trying to empower them with to write you know like positive messages anti-drug anti-sexist anti whatever they want to write about mm-hmm. that is a, a positive 
thing for kids to listen to. And some of them are just doing lyrics and we're helping them produce the songs and, uh, you know, we're getting corporate sponsors and doing that kind of thing. And a friend of mine in San Francisco is spearheading the whole thing. So I'm in and out of town with that right now. We've done a couple projects and I believe there are four more slated for the next year. And there will be a, a like a video release event for one of the projects, uh, October 24th that I'll be attending. And, you know, the song I, I wrote the music for it and helped produce it. And, uh, you know, it's young teenage, uh, girls who did the, the song with us. And it's really good. Really good stuff. You can go to drfink.com. And, uh, this Saturday night, 8 p.m., The Purple Experience, led by Matt Dr. Fink. He was there with Prince in the original band. The Capri Theater, right, was the first big show. That's out. right. Yeah. I wasn't there, yep. but, you know, I, I you know, heard all about that. So you, you can remember any, any special notes about that performance before we get into some of your own music? Yeah, that's an interesting time. That was uh, January of 79. Uh, we did two shows there, the second of which... Maybe it was the first night. I can't remember for sure. Uh, it's been right. so long. But <laughs> right. anyway, uh, all the, the Warner Brothers executives came in for that one to, to check us out. And I remember Des Dickerson had a wireless guitar system that was kind of a new thing happening, and it wasn't one of the best ones around, and it malfunctioned in the middle of the show. And we lost uh, his guitar sound for a little while. So we actually had to stop the show, and then Prince had to start talking to the audience for a little bit while we figured out the technical thing. Oh, okay. And um, <laughs> it, it was kind of scary. <laughs> it was kind of scary because he wasn't used to that. And, uh, you know, they, they came in in the dead of winter. It was below zero at night, and all these L.A. guys came in, and they froze their butts off. Right. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. I do remember one thing after the show. They said, uh, don't quit your day job. You guys need to keep working, <laughs> rehearsing. Oh, yeah. oh wow! <laughs> yeah, how'd that so, turn no, out? No, they didn't actually. What? I, I know. I said, how'd that turn out? <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't actually use those words, but they oh, okay. did say, "Well, you know, you guys are, you know, you're on your way." Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Prince, you you need to do your second album now. Right. Okay, the rest, yeah. you guys, uh, keep rehearsing. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but uh, the second show went better because we, we figured out the technical glitches. So it didn't help uh, having that happen in the middle of the show. Yeah, so so much history. And, and uh, you know, when I talk to musicians like, like yourself who are right in the middle of, of just a movement, the, you know, the Minneapolis Sound, we talked to P-Funk members. And, and you know, did, did you know this was going to be, as we are today, such an important part of musical history? while you were in the midst of it? Uh, you know, you have those hopes and dreams when you're getting into it. Yeah. So, so the push for it, the, you know, the thought of doing it, you know, putting that thought in your mind always helps. You know, vis the visualization of it. I always had visualizations of my career doing those things when I was in high school. In fact, one of my goals that I had for myself was to be on all of the national music TV shows, mm -hmm. to be on Saturday Night Live, all that stuff I was praying for. Right. And it all came to fruition. So I think, you know, for just for an advice to anybody who's out there trying to do this for a living, you just have to have the confidence and, and envision it in your mind and, and work hard. That's what it takes. You have to really... Uh, be dedicated to the craft and uh, and put long hours into it, and you will succeed. I think. Yeah, great words. What, what kind of dog do you have? Oh, sorry, the dog was. Oh, no, uh, well, okay. we have a we have a couple dogs. Oh, okay. uh, both of them, both of them are rescue dogs. Oh, that's the way to go. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The one that's barking, who's the barky one, is a little Spitfire named Phoebe, and she's the. Uh, Probably half Papillon, half Pomeranian, and then the the other uh, 
dog, which we acquired last December's name is Lola, and she's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Oh, okay. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, and she's, yeah. A, she's the quiet one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's okay. We, we keep it real here on the show. So uh, Dr. Fink is with us, Matt Dr. Fink from Minneapolis, St. Paul, and he's coming to Connecticut this Saturday night with the Purple Experience, the Ultimate Prince Tribute Band. He was there, Prince all through the Dirty Mind, the Purple Rain Tours, and uh, the Revolution. We're going to talk. You have time for one more segment? Sure. Okay. And I, you know, I was even, yeah, I was, I was there from, you know, late 78 through the end of 1990. So even into the early NPG years. That's right. Yeah. Some, yeah. Some, some, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. And one quick thing, uh, getting back to the future youth records company, people can see that and hear the song right now on the Facebook page for FYR is what it is or future youth records. Okay. They can, they can hear that song, which is called We Are the Women. And uh, amongst other things I'm working on these days, there's even a Dr. Fink solo project in the offing right now, uh, just so people, yeah, just that, so you know. All right. We look forward to that, the follow-up to Ultrasound. And uh, yeah, we're, right. we're going to get into a, a track and change it up a little bit from Ultrasound. This is called Nobody Cried. And uh, you're listening to The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF, Matt Dr. Fink, coming back one more time. That is Nobody Cried from Ultrasound, Matt Dr. Fink, great producer, keyboardist, and performer. He's bringing the Purple Experience. We're going to hear some of their live music on, on the after uh, we talk to Dr. Fink one more time. So, uh, you know, you were, we all know you with Prince and the Revolution and the MPG, and uh, your mates from the Revolution... I know you guys over the years have gotten together periodically, um, minus the the band leader Prince. But uh, is you guys still hold out hope once that he'll grace the stage with you? Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm hoping he will. Yep. And he's you know he's even hinted at it a, a little bit over the years, um, but. He thinks about it, but then he gets caught up in doing what he wants to do and moving forward. He he really seems to believe in doing new things and working with different people. And, um, you know, so I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to see. I hope he does. He knows He knows that we've all wanted to do that. Right. So it's re- so really the ball's in his court. Now, now let, me, let me ask you this. The Purple Rain Tour... My, down in Miami, the Orange Bowl, I think it was, and mm-hmm. uh, the statement, the press statement, everybody's looking for the ladder, and this is it for Torin. Did you guys believe it yourself? I'm sorry. Could you say that oh, one? Repeat sorry. that again. Something broke broke up on the phone here. Okay. One more time. You you guys did the gig, the Purple Rain. Uh, I think it was the, the Orange Bowl in Miami. Yes, that was, that one was of the, the last final show. And, well, and that then, was the final show. Yeah, okay. and then Prince released some statement. Uh, no more touring. He's going to look for the ladder. Did you guys really think that was the end of touring yourselves? Um, well, I didn't think he was going to do the. He was going to end touring. He right. did tell us. He, I mean, he did say uh, right before that show. Literally, he sat down with us in the dressing room and said, "Hey, guys, I want you to all know we're going to take a long break, a uh, long hiatus, up to possibly two years." He said. Okay. And you, you all, you all can do whatever you want. You can put out records. You can take a break, not do anything, whatever you want to do, and and you'll be on retainer. And we all said, okay, fine. But that, you know, at the moment, I said, you know, I don't know. If, you know, in two years, that's an awfully long time. I, are you sure you want to do that? Do you think that's a wise idea? And he just said, yeah, I, I just want to do what I'm going to do. And then, you know, within three months, around the world, the day was presented to us. And, uh, <laughs> that's right. So. Now, Wendy and Lisa, they were involved with some of the music on that as far as recording. And I think Lisa's brother did some string arranging on Raspberry Beret with somebody else, Novi Novog and some other people. And the thing about that album is that when Prince was recording it, I don't think Wendy and Lisa knew that it was going to come out so quickly. I think it was, that you know, because Prince is always recording songs and just, you know, archiving them. So they just thought, oh, well, this is just part of, you know, 
his creative process. He's just going to be, you know, are, you know, putting songs together for future projects, blah, blah, blah. And then <laughs> I think he got bored trying to take a break. Right. You know, I think yeah. he wanted a I think he wanted a break, really. I don't think he, I think at the moment he was serious about that mm-hmm. and then realized that uh, he couldn't sit still. Or, and you never know what's going on in his mind for sure, he just said that to us to keep us off guard so that uh, we wouldn't be so shocked when he laid that on us out of nowhere, out of the blue, you know. Yeah, I, I, thought, <laughs> I, th- I thought a cool part of the Purple Rain Tour was when you guys played the Nassau Coliseum. And I, one of the shows I had right behind the stage, so I knew that you guys were coming back out to do an encore, and you worked some of the songs from around the world in the day um, with the house lights up, and that, that was pretty cool. Now, was that on the Purple Rain Tour itself still? Yeah, it was. It was uh, St. Paul came out in his canary yellow suit, and uh, I think you guys did, you might have did America, no? Uh, Ah, okay. A couple songs. Yeah. Yeah. A couple songs. I remember. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just a lot of great tours. We didn't get to see here in the States the Sign of the Times tour, but uh, what what was special or what was kind of, not so special about the Sign of the Times tour. Was it was it all good for you? Yeah, the Sign of the Times tour was particular and was really the stage set was spectacular. The music was spectacular, and it, it's just a darn shame that that album was not toured properly in the United States. Mm-hmm. And there were just there were some things that happened that prevented that from happening. I don't know all the details. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, he even cut the tour short in Europe. I think we did about two months there. And then he thought, well, uh, let's put out a concert film. And so we came back to the then brand new, just had opened Paisley Park Studios. And we did uh, pick up filming shots for the movie. Mm-hmm. which had already been, the majority had been filmed live on tour, most of it in Paris. And so they did a lot of close-ups. They set the stage up on the sound stage at Paisley Park, took some shots, you know, quote, better shots, and did a lot of stuff. And uh, spent a couple weeks filming back home, and then they that was the end of it. So, yes, uh, very disappointing. I'm sure he was disappointed about not doing the U.S. with that show but um everybody can see it they can get the dvd in various places still i believe yep, or yep. vhs copies but that that's a great show right i mean right. it it's just a the, the musicianship and the technicality of the musicians are just stellar in that lineup yeah. really yeah what, so, what a great band and um you know yourself and bonnie on the keys and uh comparing the parts you know your your counterpart you usually had a, a counterpart each tour playing keyboards. What what were the parts you played and the other keyboardists played uh, during the Prince shows? What were you guys responsible for individually? Well, usually we would learn all the parts that were in the songs, each keyboard player, and then we would divvy the parts up. And so it was really between me and the other keyboardist. And, you, you know, by then, you know, once Lisa was out of the group, and Bonnie was there, and then later uh, working with um, uh, Rosie Gaines right. on one final tour. I was in charge of really working with both of them and divvying up the parts more than anything. Prince wasn't too instrumental in that at that point. He didn't want to have to worry about it. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. back back when Lisa was in the group, though, he would help with that at times to help divvy up those things, you know, give us assignments as to who's playing what. But, yeah, and those, so it, it really varied from song to song. Right. <laughs> yeah, so. our special guest has been Matt Dr. Fink, a uh, key member of the Minneapolis music scene and still is and, and has been for, for such a long time. And uh, he's real busy with his own band, The Purple Experience. You know, you want the authentic Minneapolis funk and, and rock blend and, and all that great sounds, the doctor can bring it to you and has uh, been doing it with his band, The Purple Experience. Coming to town, Hartford, Connecticut, Infinity Hall, uh, 8 o'clock showtime. You can go to infinityhall.com. 
That is in Hartford, Connecticut, and a bunch of other shows. We alluded to some of them. Um, they could be able to find out all the information on Facebook, but off the top of your head, what, what's upcoming after Infinity Hall? Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got two nights at the what's called the 37 Main Club. That'll be October 6th and 7th. Okay. That's a Friday and Saturday night coming up in early October, pretty soon. Uh, then we have a... Uh, what, what town uh, is that in? I'm sorry, say that again? What, what city is, is that club in? That's that's it, in Atlanta. Okay, yeah. Yes, and um, and then at the end of the month for Halloween, we have a big event here in Minneapolis for uh, the Aveda Hair Corporation event, which will be... About three thousand people for that. Wow! It's a big, yeah. big all the hair, all the hairstylists and salon owners from around the the area, Midwest come in. Some from out of town. They come in. They fly in for the what's called the uh, Hair Congress event. Right. And then there's a big Halloween bash happening with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're doing that at the uh, downtown Hilton. So, if you're a hairstylist and you want to go to this, you can come to it okay yeah i believe there's tickets i think there's uh, you have to be a, a licensed cosmetologist though i believe to get okay. into that event right so that's that should be yeah. a lot of fun and then you talked about the the wolf den at the mohegan sun casino here in connecticut right correct and then uh in november um let's see november 8th we'll be at the magic bag I'm sorry, October 8th, I apologize. We'll be at the Magic Bag Theater um, in Detroit. And then um, and October uh, 9th, we're at the Holland Theater in Ohio. Okay. And then there's, there's going to be a date booking up here on October 10th. I don't have the exact venue yet. I made a mistake on that, that time for... Um, 37 Main. That's November 6th and 7th. I apologize. Okay. In Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, in Atlanta. And then uh, we'll be in Orlando, Florida, November 12th at the Savannah. um, Oh, I can't remember. It's some sort of place called the Savannah Center in Orlando. And then there's another uh, show down in southwestern Florida on the 14th, which I don't have the name of the venue yet. It just came in the other day. Soon to be so, announced, yeah. Yeah, now, there's one other thing. I'll just kind of go along the calendar a little if you want. Uh, November 20th in Sacramento. I'm sorry, November 21st at the Colonial Theater in Sacramento, California. Right. And then there's a show in Davenport, Iowa, right after Thanksgiving. I don't remember the name of the venue. And then Grand Falls casino and resort in Sioux Falls. I think that's South Dakota. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So that's what's going on there. And then, of course, um, New Year's is to be determined, but right now it looks like it could be the Hard Rock Cafe here at the Mall of America. Wow. So you know what, you know what it looks like? You're, you're touring more than your former boss, Prince, <laughs> as of the moment. Yeah, I yeah. guess you could say that. Yeah. You could say that, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm sure Prince will be out on the road for the hit-and-run gigs again. So, uh, you know, you guys, i got to thank you, Dr. Matt Fink, all, all the great performances and, and recordings over the years, and, and looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting with you yeah. as well. Yeah. Everybody, our audience, if you get a chance, Saturday night, 8 o'clock, Hartford, Connecticut, the Purple Experience, Dr. Matt Fink, and we're going to give you a taste of what you're going to be hearing that night, Saturday night, 8 o'clock. So thanks, Doc. Thank you.